What's up folks, this is Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. Today I'm going to talk about how you can get into RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. This is a Chaosium classic from back in the 1970s and 80s, and this is going to be an opportunity to play Swords and Sandal Fantasy unlike anything you've ever tried before. RuneQuest is this. You. Yeah. What is your profession? Sculptor, sir. In this case, you are the Greeks, you're not the Spartans. Because in RuneQuest, your characters have lives. They aren't just full-time adventurers running off and trying to gain glory and treasure. Everything they do is for their community. So in this Bronze Age role-playing game, you're going to have gritty combat where you could lose limbs or suffer long-term consequences for a minor scrape. You're going to have conflicts where the opponents don't immediately murder hobo everything. There are actually rules and, and guidelines for uh, ransom and, and prisoner exchanges between communities. You're going to have the wonderful world of Greg Stafford that he's been building since the 1960s, rest in peace Greg Stafford, and you're also going to get the imaginative qualities of his fantasy vision. Um, in RuneQuest Glorantha, you're going to have every single character wielding magic of some sort. You're going to have access to a wide variety of ancestries that are common in role-playing, such as the duck people. So if you are interested at this point and you want to see what it takes to get into this game, stick with me because we're going to go there. This is my RuneQuest Glorantha Buyer's Guide. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to get if you're interested in playing RuneQuest is going to be the starter set. It's a very low entry point cost and it comes absolutely jam-packed with material. I know you may be saying, well, gee, it's kind of obvious that you would start with a starter set, but that's not the case for me, at least, for most game companies. Most starter sets seem to be like a very watered down and uh, almost superficial version of their game with very um, low quality adventures and not a whole lot of content, just looking to make a few bucks. Well, I don't think that Myth or uh, Chaosium could possibly be making a ton of money on this because it is absolutely packed to the brim with material. It's got gorgeous artwork on it, and it is really a great way to get into the game. First off, it's got four books. Uh, this rule book here, while it seems light, is actually rather robust. It has 61 pages, and it is, in my opinion, an easier to read layout than the actual role-playing in Glorantha book, which I love, but this is a way better way for me to grok the rules because there are some intricacies and nuances in these rules that took me a little bit to pick up on. Book two is about the world of Glorantha, which, like I was saying in the intro, Glorantha is a little bit different than the games that you're used to playing. So this is going to be a great primer. It tells you about the culture, it tells you about the history, and it tells you about some of the regions. This, if you've seen my favorite free RP, solo RPG video, you'll know that I love Chaosium's um, adventure game books. And this is the same thing, but for RuneQuest. It uses the real rules and you actually play a game of RuneQuest. The one caveat to that is, in this one, you don't actually create your character through the organic process that was used in uh, Flames Against the Darkness, or, or uh, Alone Against the Flames, rather, sorry, combine the two. But, uh, but it is still um, you know, a branching, narrative-focused, uh, um, solo adventure experience that helps you learn the rules. So this is an awesome addition. And then lastly, you have this beautiful book of adventures. And this is enough adventures 
to get you started and to give you a nice little playground to get a campaign going because your heroes, your characters, uh, and your players are going to want to get the full RuneQuest experience. If you are not playing this like it's Glorantha, like it's a little bit different, like it's Sword and Sandals, you're not going to get the full value out of RuneQuest. And so this is a great start to that. Additionally, all of these books together lay flat and they have the effect of creating one nice map. Uh, now, I know it's not really practical uh, to have all of your books laid out backwards, but it was just a nice touch that Chaosium did this. Now, beside the books, you also get your dice. So this does have the Christmas morning batteries included experience that you're looking for in a starter set. You get a couple of maps. One of them is adventure related, so I won't reveal that one. But then you also get this nice map of Northern Sartar. And then on the back of it, you get a map of Johnstown. And this is absolutely a gorgeously illustrated map. And the paper, I can't really display it on the video, but it's much thicker than the standard maps you would get in a product like this. Uh, one thing you're going to find when you get into the full RuneQuest and Glorantha experience, whenever you, uh, you buy the full role-playing game, is character creation, it takes a minute. It is going to be a very detailed and, um, for the first time, probably tasking experience, but it's well worth it. Because in character creation, you create the entire, entire three or four generation history of your character and their family, uh, the profession of their, their parents, and what great battles or events they've uh, taken part in. Well, this is a very strong collection of pre-generated characters that you can use right out of the box. There's lots of variety here. Uh, you can see there's a couple that even have pets. Um, there are different archetypes. You've got uh, you know, your strong ear warrior here. Uh, you've got your, your barbarian looking dude here. But these are gonna let you get started without spending a couple hours creating characters. And that is great in my book. I would probably use those even if I were going to start a new campaign with the full experience, and then we would create characters later as, as those heroes die, because they're probably going to die in this game. Strike Ranks is the initiative system for RuneQuest, and it is a little bit different than other initiative systems. It's not hard, it's just different. Uh, I would liken it to a new player trying to cope with Thaco. Us old players know that it's, it's a simple math equation subtracting from 20, but it's, it's not a big, uh, a big hurdle, but it may be seemingly more complicated than what it is. This strike rank tracker uh, helps you to cope with that. The Gloranthan runes. In the world of Glorantha, everything is made up of runes. Um, so this just kind of goes into some of the description of what the rune, rune uh, domains cover. And then this is a very nice rule summary, uh, so you don't have to keep flipping back and forth and referencing the books repeatedly. My goodness, that's a lot of stuff. And it's all in this box. And that's why you should be starting with the RuneQuest starter set because Chaosium is the king of starter sets. All right, you bought the starter set, you love what you're seeing, but now you've decided you wanna have the full RuneQuest experience. Where do you go next? Well, the next stop is going to be RuneQuest Roleplaying in Glorantha. This is the core book for this game, at least at this uh, version of the game. 
So this book is about 445 pages long. Uh, it is typical Chaosium quality. You get the ribbon, you get the uh, Smithsonian binding, you get gorgeous end papers. This is a map of Dragon Pass. And then on the back side, uh, end papers, you get a map of the city of Boldhome. And more importantly, you get all the rules to play the game. You get the combat rules, the spell rules, the character creation rules, which take up a significant portion of the game of the book. Uh, you get a generous section on the culture, history, and geography of Dragon Pass area, which is uh, the kind of the generic starting area for most RuneQuest games. And you get absolutely gorgeous layout and wonderful artwork, which is unlike anything you're going to see in another game system, because generally you're not doing Bronze Age sword and sandal stuff. But with this book, I love it. I like it so much that it was the book so nice I bought it twice. So I actually have two copies of this because I love to have two copies of core rule books. It's a it's a personal thing. But with that said, it is not the easiest book to grok. Um, clearly, the creators have a, a passion for this world and this rule set, but as somebody that had never played previous editions to RuneQuest, it was difficult to get through the first time because I started with it before getting the starter set because I generally don't like starter sets. I only bought their starter set because the, um, the uh, Call of Cthulhu one was so good. And it makes this book so much better because this book, in my opinion, is a reference book, not a learning book. So it's better to learn the game from the starter set, reference the extended rules in this book. But like I said, I bought two copies of this, so I'm not down in it. It is a great book, great art, great layout, and um, wonderful, wonderful rules set. The bestiary, or bestiary, depending on how you pronounce it. So... This one is, again, typical Chaosium quality. you got the, the ribbon, you've got the Smithsonian, you've got the in-paper maps. One back here, too. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is a little bit different than most best series that you're going to, to be familiar with because every... Uh, combat in RuneQuest is going to involve hit locations. And so not all different creatures have the same locations you can hit. Therefore, each entry has its own hit location section. And there are, you know, actual effects that, that cause changes to the mechanics of the game based on where you're hitting somebody and what kind of damage you're doing to that, that body part or that location. And there's also rules for playing several of the monsters as adventurers. So like this is the centaur, uh, and it's full rules for creating a centaur hero. Another thing that is a little bit different is that all of the entries do not assume that all of their kind are exactly the same. They give characteristic roles where you can create custom versions of each entry, which have mechanical effects on the game. Uh, it does take a lot of time though, so you're probably not gonna wanna do that every time, but whenever you're creating a unique or a special version of a certain monster or uh, adversary, this is a great system to do it. But it also has this averages section so it kind of gives you an easy out if you just want to have a typical tusk rider in this case. But um, each of the entries goes very deeply into um, the history, kind of their customs, and what, what the culture is like for the creatures, if, if they're smart, or kind of their ecology, if they are more animalistic creatures. And it is a really nice deep dive into the world of Glorantha, because again, this is not your standard fantasy role-playing game. But the 
bestiary is certainly an awesome addition. And even if you weren't going to play RuneQuest, this would still be a good book to grab just for the entries on each of the individual creatures and, and adversaries because it gives a really good starter primer on how to properly build adversaries yourself because it goes into the why, not just the what. But this is the Glorantha Bestiary. Okay, so this is going to be the Game Master's screen pack. And similar to the Call of Cthulhu one, it comes chock full of extra goodies and a nice little sleeve to keep all the goodies together. So you get a book of adventures, you get a reference sheet, which is a little bit more robust than the one that comes in the starter set and gives you all the tables and different rule specifics that are going to keep the game flowing nicely. You get a RuneQuest Glorantha calendar. Now this is important because the seasons are key to role-playing in Glorantha, as are the cycles of the runes and the moons, uh, because it affects how magic works. So this is going to be something that it may seem silly, but it's actually going to really enhance your game. It's got a very nice character sheet. Of course, there's a whole lot of color on this. So if you go to copy and print this, it is going to drain $100 worth of ink every sheet that you print. But it actually um, folds out too. So it's got this whole very beautiful uh, like portfolio style character sheet. Um, then we have kind of the, the same thing, but black and white. If you don't want to spend a fortune on color ink, um, you've got some starter characters and Vasana Farron, or Farnan's daughter. Uh, that is going to be like the main character for this edition of the game. But you've got several different choices here. So we're going to skip past those and. This pack actually details a small community known as Apple Lane, which has a long history in the world of Glorantha, and it is a very evocative map of this small community. Now you can see um, from the visual depiction that the largest building is uh, Ularia's Temple, right in the center of town, and, and it kind of gives you an idea of what's important to the folks in Glorantha. And then on the back side, you have a wider map of the Apple Lane area. And this connects to that map to create a bigger map. And on the other side, it has clear wine. Then we get a larger map, which is going to show where the lands of the Colomar tribes are, clans are. And then on the flip side, you get the, uh, the color version of that. And you've got a massive one-sided Dragon Pass map. This is going to be the area that's covered in the core rule book in the end papers. Uh, so this is a beautiful map and will cover your large scale um, plans for your campaign. And then of course, this is called the Game Master Screen Pack. And that's not for nothing. And here is the artwork on the outside of it. And the massive amount of information on the inside. And it is highly usable at the table. It is almost a requirement to me because RuneQuest is not a game where you want to get bogged down in all the different systems. 
You want the systems to help the game be more immersive. And so that is the Game Master Screen Pack. Okay, so you got the starter set, you got the core rules, you've got the bestiary, you've got the, um, the Game Master Screen Pack. Where to next? Well, as has been a theme throughout this video, Glorantha is not your typical fantasy game. My suggestion, even though the starter set has some adventures in it and the Game Master's uh, uh, pack has some adventures in it, I would suggest getting one of these two books next. So this is the Pegasus, Pegasus Plateau and Other Stories, which is, uh, there's seven adventures. Um, you could play them kind of linked uh, loosely together, or you could play them as one shots. Either way, uh, very short adventures, uh, easy to get done in a single setting. Um, or you could also instead get The Smoking Ruin and Other Stories. Uh, this has three adventures. They're a little bit beefier, uh, a little bit longer, and um, either one of them would be a great way to see what adventures would look like, and Glorantha gives you a lot more background on the areas in which they take place, which will also help you write your own adventures in those areas, and also gives you some stat blocks for some adversaries. So this would be where I would go next. Of course, because this is Chaosium, even their adventure books, you get the ribbon, you get the Smith's own. They don't have the end paper art, but the art inside is still excellent. Great maps, um, great backstories, great information about the different regions. Same thing here. You know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. There's one of the duck people I was talking about. And that is where I would go next with my RuneQuest purchases. All right, so you have all of the necessities. What follows next is kind of my honorable mentions list. Right first is the Glorantha Sourcebook. Uh, the Glorantha Sourcebook is a great primer for the world of Glorantha, uh, the setting for RuneQuest. It has some awesome history of the world, has some information about the different cultures, and of course, because it's it's Chaosium, has the great quality construction and the way, the great artwork. Now I am being careful about where I flip to here because the first time I actually started recording this, I flipped to a piece of artwork that had a little bit of nudity in it. It was done in an old uh, Bronze Age style. Uh, so it wasn't done to titillate, it was done as a depiction of their style of artwork. But that may be something that bothers you. And that is actually true <clears throat> throughout the RuneQuest line. So if you have sensitive eyes uh, that are going to be looking at this, um, it may not be a game for younger players. Uh, that's that's going to be a parenting decision. But the Glorantha Sourcebook is a great investment. Then you also have the Red Book of Magic. This expands the uh, different spells that are available and goes into a little bit more detail on the magic system, which can be a little bit more complex than I would like it to be. So this is a good book for that. The Weapons and Equipment <clears throat> is very much like the old Arms and Equipment Guide from D&D 2nd Edition, but it also has various... Um, different services and kind of uh, economic uh, discussion about costs and uh, mounts and different things of that nature. So it's going to be a good pickup if you feel like your campaign needs more of that. Again, there's enough of it in the core rule book, but this was a good pickup too. This last one is going to be the most questionable of the ones that I am going to talk about. This is actually a print-on-demand of a solo quest collection that was done for a previous edition of RuneQuest. I believe it was RuneQuest either second or third edition. I think it was second edition. Um, and so this is going to kind of expand on that solo RuneQuest idea that was presented in the starter set with that, that solo book. 
And it's got several different options for that. Some of them more story-based, some of them more or less just kind of a, uh, a RuneQuest Fight Club. Um, because it is for an older edition, there is a little bit of conversion that has to take place, but not a lot. Um, RuneQuest has largely stayed very similar throughout its run. Um, so you could jump into this pretty easily with a little bit of homework and be able to use it with the new rules but I felt like I needed to uh, give that caveat. But those are my honorable mentions for RuneQuest. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope that this helps you understand better how to get into a wonderful game by Chaosium, a company that cares about their community, and kind of overcome some of the hurdles associated with role-playing in Glorantha because it's not the easiest game to get into if you don't know where to start. That being said, I didn't miss Wizards' response to the OGL 1.1 debacle. And I guess my response to that would be, they are transparently dishonest with us. They think that we are stupid. And I have very little to no trust left that their next release is going to be any better or any more fair than the last one. The only reason they made a shift is because we caught them. If they had not had their document leaked, <clears throat> it would be active right now. So I'm not giving them a free pass. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to share this amazing work by Chaosium. Chaosium, who is assisting with the Orc license project that Paizo is heading up. So if you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And keep gaming, keep gaming free, good gaming, and God bless. This is a... This is a damn fine automobile. If you want my honest opinion, beats the hell out of the sports wagon, but... Ed, I'm not your ordinary, everyday fool, okay?